first to ninth in the world in the percentage of our adults with four-year degrees. Among young adults under 35, we dropped to 12th in the world. That is a prescription for disaster. And you can fix that. But I dare say that I know this because I gave 133 uh, talks <laughs> during the late election season. I know for a fact that there aren't 5% of the people in the United States of America who know this bill passed, much less what's in it. <laughs> and therefore, it has not yet gripped the imagination of our young people. You should, first thing I want to ask you is make sure every last kid you've got in these schools at least for the time they're in middle school, knows exactly what this student loan bill does. So it doesn't matter how poor their parents are. It doesn't matter what kind of problems they have. It doesn't matter if daddy loses the job, if mom loses the job, it doesn't matter what happens. They can go to college now because of the law. It is a revolutionary law, which does, it, it, I cannot tell you how important this is, but it won't amount to a hill of beans if people don't know it exists. So I ask you first to think about that. The second thing I would like to ask you to do is to make sure every charter school in America joins the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. After I had my heart surgery, the American Heart Association and my foundation set up this alliance to try to stop and then reverse the rising tide of childhood obesity. It's the number one public health problem in America. In the last couple of years, we've had children as young as nine in New York and Washington, D.C. being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It's become so alarming that the American Medical Association had to say here before last that you can no longer refer to type 2 diabetes. Type 1 is the kind you're born with. Type 2 is the kind you get from living. And we always called it adult onset diabetes. So the AMA said, you can't say that anymore. We've got nine-year-old kids showing up with us because of what we eat and don't eat, because of what, how we exercise or don't exercise. So I just came back from my library in Arkansas, and we had our annual meeting where we gave awards to 275 schools. And we now have 12,000 schools in this Alliance for a Healthy Generation. We help people with their school meals. We help them with their exercise programs. We help them find affordable ways to manage these challenges, which are quite profound. We made deals with the, the soft drink manufacturers that has cut by 88% the total caloric content of drinks served in our schools, among the participating schools. 40% caloric content in the snacks. And we got the people who are supplying on contract the, the school meals now to agree to very high standards to improve the quality and lower the con uh, caloric content of the meals. And there are about 239 charter schools that are part of these 12,000 schools. But since you are the children of reform, and since your kids can't learn if they can't think, I don't care what you do, there ought to be 2,000 charter schools in our alliance for a healthy generation. And I hope more of you will join. You can, you know, find out more about it. I'm going to put my glasses on here <laughs> at our website. It's called healthiergeneration.org. And I urge you to do that. It's a big deal. Let me uh, just ask you to think about two more things. Oh, uh, let me just say this. One of my favorite creative schools is the Harlem Children's Zone. They're my neighbors just down the street from New York. So we asked them to host a meeting for the Alliance for a Healthier Generation because they maintain such good contact with all their parents. And we announced this meeting a week before it occurred. We spent no money advertising it. We had it on a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. An enormous percentage of the parents of the Harlem Children's Zone are struggling, working people that don't have much money. A thousand people showed up. A thousand people to talk about the health of their children. 
So I, I urge you, more of you, to become involved in that. I also uh, would like to mention just two other things. There are millions of jobs open today that have not been filled in months. And even though the unemployment rate is higher, and everybody knows it's higher than the 9% registered because of people who quit looking, because they're discouraged, and because of people who have part-time jobs who want full-time jobs. Notwithstanding that, jobs are being filled, posted job openings, that is, people I want to hire, they're being filled at a rate that is about half the rate of new jobs being filled coming out of previous recessions. If you were just filling the posted job openings at the rate we were filling them in previous recessions, there would be somewhere between one and a half and three million more people working today. Now, here in Georgia, the immediate past labor commissioner, Michael Thurman, who has been a friend of mine for many years, was given responsibility for job training, spending the federal job training money. He also oversaw Georgia's successful implementation of welfare reform. So in an attempt to shorten this gap, Michael Thurman offered to give the federal money direct to the employers if they hadn't filled their jobs within, I forget what it was, maybe three weeks or something. And then they could train people however they wanted, and they could have people they didn't have to treat as employees, that is, they didn't have to pay Social Security and unemployment and all the other stuff you have to pay for your employees, unless they actually hire them at the end of the training period. And it seemed to really speed up the system. I say that because I think that this is an opportunity for charter schools, training programs, and employers, many of whom support you strongly where you live, to try to solve this problem at the grassroots level. We have got to do something about this. It is nuts as high as unemployment rate is for us to be filling these vacancies only half as fast as we've always filled them in the previous recession. And I think you could have some effect on that. So, I wanted to ask you about that. One final thing I'd like you to think about. Here we are in the summertime. Some of you are doubtless using your physical facilities, and some aren't. But unemployment and construction in many American states is 25%. Nevada is 50%. And we can't justify building more buildings. But We can justify, if we could finance, making more energy efficient every school, every state, county, and local building, every college, university building, every hospital, every museum in the country. And they're all safe buildings because they're going to be here five years from now. Here is why this is not happening. You don't have a lot of walking around cash to pay the contract. So, right? And a lot of schools, a lot of public schools, uh, have the whole districts have maxed out on their bonding capacity. But if there were a financing mechanism to pay the contractor and you could pay back a loan only from your savings and utility bills, it would not cost you one red cent. And basically, rule of thumb. Tell you how it works. If you save 15 or 20 percent putting in new windows and light bulbs, you can pay that off in a year and a half from savings. If you get over 30 and you have to borrow the money, over 30 percent savings, you're looking at longer periods of time, somewhere between four and a half and sometimes seven years, depending on how big the savings are. But once you pay them off, then your school has a lower electric bill forever. Meanwhile, you're helping America solve a problem. Every billion dollars we spend in making buildings more energy efficient puts 7,000 people to work. It's the highest 
investment to job number ratio of any of the energy options. You get 3,300 jobs per billion dollars with wind energy if you make and assemble windmills that we would put up in the same country. You get 1,900 for solar. You get 870 for coal and less for nuclear. So if you want to put America back to work, making the physical structures of America more energy efficient is a very good thing to do. If any of you have any interest in this, I, I am, I have worked with, I'm going to have a meeting at the end of the month in Chicago of the Clinton Global Initiative dedicated just to putting Americans back to work here. And I've been working with the labor unions and others to establish a fund to finance this. So they would pay the contractors and then the schools and the local government people could pay the contract, pay the fund back, but only from your utility bill. No out-of-pocket money. It makes me sick to drive by all these schools that aren't open during summer vacation and not seeing people fixing them. One last thing you could do that I